If you can master the simple prompts that I'll show you in this video, ChatGPT can make all your SEO efforts effortless. It'll help you get all your pages ready for search without looking and sounding like horrible SEO content and all without spending tons of time on it. In fact, you could get your entire website SEO optimized this afternoon. The secret to getting perfect content out is all about knowing the specific prompts to put in. It's a new skill that the industry is calling prompt engineering. And if you get really good at it, ChatGPT will be your new best friend in business, unlocking your ability to create much more in much less time. And most videos you're gonna find here about using ChatGPT to help you with SEO, they're only gonna focus on helping you rank your blog posts. But I'm gonna help you with that plus your money pages too. So I'm talking your homepage, your service pages, and sales pages. So let's start by mastering SEO pillar one, topical authority. No matter how well you optimize your individual pages and posts, one of the biggest things that's gonna help Google see you as the website that they wanna rank for all your keywords is they have to see you as a true authority in your niche or industry. And you can't get that kind of status with just five or 10 blog posts plus a homepage. You need good quality content and lots of it that covers all the important aspects of your niche. And this list of topics and posts you'd wanna cover is what we call a topical map. I chatted with Garrett Malak, the founder and CEO of seoleverage.com, and he's been doing all kinds of experimentation with ChatGPT powered SEO ever since it first came out. The goal of a topical map is to cover a niche topic as deep as, and as fully as possible, because then Google recognizes you as what you call a topical authority in this space. And the really cool thing is we can use ChatGPT directly to create a really detailed topical map just for your business. And that's basically gonna be your own custom playbook for the SEO content that's gonna help you the most. So here's how to use it to get all the blog posts you'll ever need starting with that topical map. And to get that topical map, all you're gonna need to do is use this prompt. Now it's kind of a long one and I'll explain all the pieces to you. So help me come up with a topical map for my blog that has the best chance of helping me rank for long tail keywords that are specific to my keyword. And this is where you would add in your, your niche, your industry. Um, for our case, I'll just say, um, I'll say cosmetic surgery, and give each a clickbait style title. For the reason of you want your articles to actually be intriguing, clickbait has kind of a bad uh, rap, but it doesn't, it doesn't really mean to be misleading, it just means to be intriguing. And then as long as you can deliver on uh, the promise of your title, it's not really clickbait, but it still gets people to click, right? And I'm gonna say provide a list of 50 titles, you can make it more if you want. Um, I might recommend, I'm, I'm gonna make this a lot smaller for now. I would go with like 100, so you just have a good spreadsheet of them. So provide at least a list of 100 titles. Prioritize transactional intent topics. What that means is these are topics that are more likely for people who are searching when they're, they're more ready to buy. They're not so much just kind of general information. It's more like I'm actually showing interest and showing um, a desire to spend money at this point. So, and then next to each title, add the best long tail keyword phrase that that title should be targeting. So it's gonna tell you the title, then next to it, it's gonna say, and by the way, this is the keyword phrase that we're targeting with this article. Super important to know that. And then I say, do not duplicate keyword phrases. That way you're not gonna be cannibalizing your articles. Like you don't want two articles that are going after the same you know, um, you know, nose job. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and let this run and see what it comes with. Okay, so here we've got a list of 10. You might have more if you went for 100 or 50. What you're gonna wanna do is put the ones that you think you can actually, they're gonna be a good fit for your business. You'd put them into a spreadsheet and you'd put the keyword phrase in the next column over just to keep track of everything. Some of these you're probably not gonna wanna do. Like I probably wouldn't do 10 shocking before and after photos of celebrity cosmetic surgery transformations, it, it, that shows no buyer intent. That's just someone who's looking for a train wreck, I think. So in every business type, there's going to be a version of that. So just make sure all of these really have that intent behind it, that someone who's actually researching this, who's looking to, to actually spend money with you. So just keep track of all of them that you wanna run with. 
We just did this for a client. It came up with 50 topics. I think that we had then the client go through this list and strip out a few things they, they thought didn't make much sense. Uh, but now we have a list of 50 topics and we really want to cover them in the next month. So we're going to go one by one, sorting them first and say, okay, these topics should rank for these keywords and then go really, really deep. So just add all the topics that make sense for you to cover to a spreadsheet. Then from there, it's time to actually write them. Just go one by one. And of course, this is where ChatGPT is really going to cut your workload. We usually like to use ChatGPT really for an outline, first and foremost because this is very often also the trickiest part when you get started that you really don't know how to structure this, what kind of subheadlines to use, how to go about exploring this topic. And it's doing a really, really good job there. Okay, so here's how to get that outline. We're gonna type in a prompt. Now create an outline for an article titled Cosmetic Surgery for Men, Top 5 Procedures for a More Confident You. We got that from our topical map generation. Now we're gonna say, who ChatGPT needs to be acting as. I'm saying write it as an experienced cosmetic surgeon specializing in men's procedures. It's important because we don't want it just to say, we don't want ChatGPT just to write it from ChatGPT's point of view. It's gonna sound just like there's no experience level there. Um, and write it for men over the age of 50 or whoever your target demographic is. So um, two really important things to have there. We need to tell it who it is, what it's an expert in, and who it's writing it for. So then we're gonna let it do its thing and come up with an outline. And at this point, you can make any tweaks at the outline stage you'd like to see. You can have it delete something, replace something, make a specific request. You know, and if, if the content were to seem too thin to be to make a, a long enough article out of it, now is when you would wanna request additional points to be made here. So if anything here didn't seem right to you, you wanted to replace one point with another point, you would just talk to it like it's a person, like act as if it's a copywriter, because it really, that's what the chat in ChatGPT comes from, is you can just chat with it and be very conversational. And you could say, hey, I don't like this part five preparing for surgery. Um, can you take it out? And it'll rewrite it without it. So, but assuming we like everything, now we're gonna use this prompt. Now, write the article in a casual, helpful tone. You could say a serious tone. You could say a humorous, playful tone. You could say um, in someone's specific voice, like Oprah, Alex Hormozy, Gary Vaynerchuk. You know, if you think that one of those people is gonna do, like, if you think your article should be written from that voice, then it's a really powerful thing and it can do it. I'll take it out for now and insert personal anecdotes if they help illustrate a point. And of course, it's gonna be coming from ChatGPT. They won't be a real person's anecdotes, but it can give you little placeholders for where you can put in your own anecdotes or your own experiences or stories. Super powerful, and it helps this AI-generated content go a little above and beyond the typical, you know, what the computer is going to give you. So highly recommend adding that in here as well and then just going through and uh, replacing what it puts in with your own stuff. I said include H2s and H3s as needed. Those are just the subheadings. Really important to have from an SEO point of view. You need all the right designations and headlines. And expand on key points or add more if needed to hit at least a thousand words. Again, we're going for um, content that's relevant here. And what we need in relevant content is it needs to be long enough. We don't want thin content. Google tends to not prioritize and you know, can penalize articles that are written to be pretty short. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the generate button here and we'll see what it comes back with. Now it seems to be doing a pretty good job of, of writing here. And um, it's even coming up with the headlines and the subheadlines, which is great. And it really feels like it's coming from a person's point of view, right? And then a lot of that has to do with the fact that we asked for it in a casual, friendly tone. If we didn't do that, it would probably sound a little more stiff and you never really want that. Even, as, even if a cosmetic surgeon's writing an article, you, you still don't want it to sound stiff. It's gonna relate much better and keep people on your site much longer if it comes from 
um, that personable point of view. And here we have a story. Here's one of my patients, a gentleman in his early 60s, came in complaining of constantly looking tired. It's actually doing a good job of adding in little stories and you would be able to replace that with something from your own experience or just add to it to really make it come alive even more. And now it's just kind of stopped writing because sometimes it it's just kind of hit a end point and then you have to just type in um, continue. But I'm actually not gonna have it continue right now because I'm just gonna get onto the next step, but it's doing a great job writing. Um, all you'd really wanna do at this point is copy and paste it into a Google Doc and then just do any of those light rewrites you need to but we still have a very important step, few steps here. The first one is I think we can maybe do better than that original title. Remember it gave us a list of topics, but now we want the perfect title that's gonna make people really wanna click on it and read it. So I'm just gonna type in here, create 10 clickbait style titles for this article. Clickbait's just gonna make it sound much more intriguing. All titles generated must be optimized for the keyword phrase, cosmetic surgery for men. You would basically just take the keyword phrase that it gave you in that first step when it was creating the topical map, and you would just say, okay, that's the keyword phrase that identify that we wanna go for here. I'm gonna pop it in here, and now we're gonna get 10 art titles that we can choose between and already, so a cosmetic surgery for men, secrets they don't want you to know, unlock your youthful confidence. These five cosmetic surgery procedures for men are taking over, find out why. So all of these are better than the original title, which I believe was just cosmetic surgery for men, top five procedures for a more confident you. Not exactly gonna get, uh, get the clicks, right? But these I think are much more interesting. From there, you're just gonna choose the title that you like best and copy and paste your whole article into that Google Doc. So we've got a new article. But this doesn't mean this is content is creatively elaborated. It doesn't mean this is something Google wouldn't have seen elsewhere. And this is a big problem for SEO because in SEO, we always want to try to essentially plus one what is already out there in order to get a competitive advantage. It's true, but we can still have that competitive advantage. It just takes one extra little step to get it to where it needs to be. So there's another YouTube channel called Income School, and they just did a great video where they tested their own pro writer versus ChatGPT writing the same article about when is the best time to buy an ATV. And they came to the conclusion that the AI written content just didn't stack up saying, that content feels very much like commodity content. Yeah. It lacked depth, personal experience, and a point of view from the writer. You know, it was written kind of like a term paper. Now, it does need to be said that they didn't specifically ask for a more casual, helpful tone like we did, and that can actually help out quite a bit. You know, by default, pretty much everything you ask it to, to write is gonna sound a little robotic. But even if you asked for something lighter, you're still gonna wanna take a manual, human pass at each article as it comes out, you know? Check it for factual errors, add in a few personal stories, your own expert opinions and experiences that will set your article apart from the rest of all that commodity content out there. Because trust me, there's about to be a lot more commodity content thanks to AI. Most people are just gonna use it completely unfiltered, which is bad for them, but good for you because you know better, right? The great news is you already have a really solid Sunday provided by ChatGPT. Now, you just have to add the sprinkles and the cherry. And of course, we wanna give your newly personalized article a really good SEO reality check just to make sure that it's as optimized as it can possibly be. And of course, we can use ChatGPT for that step too. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna run your edited version of your article through ChatGPT with this prompt. Is the following article optimized for the keyword phrase, cosmetic procedures for, not for me, for men? <laughs> if so, just tell me it's okay. So meaning if it's good to go, all it's gonna say is you're good. If not, go ahead and make it optimized with minimal rewriting. Put your changes in bold, that way we can see at a glance like what ChatGPT actually changed. Here's the article and I'm going to paste the article in and uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so apparently it wasn't really optimized as it was, so because it's rewriting it a little bit. So yeah, now it's just, it's doing its thing, it's rewriting it, and at that point, 
you're just gonna copy and paste it, write it back into that Google Doc, and this at this point, it should be really good to go. And I'm gonna stop generating here. We have a few extra steps here. The first one is we wanna create the meta description. So I'm gonna just gonna tell it to do that. Now write an optimized and intriguing meta description for the article. Cool. And then that's what would show up in your Google search listing. And that's why I said to make it intriguing because it's not enough that it just has the keywords. You want people to actually read it, right? So this paired with that really nice clickbaity style headline, you should get plenty of clicks. And at that point, you're just gonna rinse and repeat um, over the next few months to a year as you have time to create new articles. You're just gonna go through these steps and create them one by one and load them up onto your website. Okay, time for SEO pillar two, optimizing your money pages. So once you've gotten the ball rolling on your blog content, you're starting to build topical authority, which will basically prop up your website's SEO as a whole. But you gotta give your sales pages a proper chance to rank on their own. I'm of course talking about your homepage, service pages, and any other pages on your website that you wanna rank and search. And step one here is knowing what keywords you want each of your important pages to rank for. So I'm not gonna be doing a deep dive tutorial into keyword research in this video, but I'm gonna to link to one in the description below if you need help there. But if you already know what you're trying to rank for, let's just jump back over to ChatGPT. So the first thing you're gonna do is just run your page content for each of your service pages, your homepage through ChatGPT and you're gonna use this prompt with it. Is this page properly optimized for the search term? And in this case, it'll be a, a service page for a cosmetic surgeon, Hair Restoration Chicago. Does it include enough semantically related terms to be thorough? Semantically related terms are just other words that Google would expect to see included on a page. So if it's hair restoration, they might expect to see words like follicle or transplant, you know, so it just these are terms that signals to Google, okay, this topic is being portrayed thoroughly. If so, just tell me it's good. If not, add what needs to be added to be fully optimized, but make sure it reads naturally and makes perfect sense. That's really important because we don't just want to make this a pure SEO optimized page that has lost all of its human connection, right? Use bold text on all new content and keywords you add. Again, so we can see at a glance what's been changed. Here's the content. And I'll just go ahead and I'm gonna paste in content from a page I found. Yeah, it looks like everything is not good to go and they're going to, it's going to be suggesting some changes and adding stuff into it. Okay, so it's done it, but now here's where I like to add in my own little secret weapon. So we're gonna add in the extra prompt Let's add an extra keyword rich section at the bottom, make it benefit driven and read naturally. So this is just gonna add an extra, like more content at the bottom that's gonna help us even more try to rank for that keyword. So let's go ahead and add that in. So you can see it's adding more cases of that keyword phrase. It's adding some benefits here, so it reads really well. This is great extra content, guys. It's not just pure SEO it's actually adding more context to the business. So something like this is really gonna be um, a way to go further and go a little bit more beyond the way other people are gonna be using ChatGPT for their SEO. And th from here, I'm just gonna do one last reality check, one last prompt, and I'm gonna say, is the new page with the changes and extra section now fully optimized for the term hair restoration Chicago? Well, let's see what it says. Yes. With the changes and additional keyword rich section, the page is now fully optimized for the term and it wasn't before. So this is a win in my book. And one page you definitely wanna do this for is your pricing page. Now, most businesses don't even think of their pricing page as an SEO play, but think about how many people are searching for pricing in your industry. So even if you don't have one now, I want you to watch this video where I get schooled by an SEO expert on how he does pricing pages for his clients that literally shoot them to number one overnight. So click right here for that strategy. It's definitely not one you wanna miss.